There is an incredibly useful tool that was added to Windows relatively recently, but not many people know about. It's called Power Automate Desktop, and it's basically a way to automate almost anything you can think of, and it's GUI based, so you don't have to know how to code. These automations you create are called flows, and you can see how you have an enormous list of possible actions you can have it do step by step. Anything from copying or deleting a folder, to taking a screenshot or printing a document, to setting some variable to use in another action, or even checking if a window contains a certain text. And of course, you can set conditions to only do steps in certain cases, and loop a set of steps as long as you need. So if you aren't someone who knows how to code, this is actually a good way to learn some of the basic high-level concepts. If you're on Windows 11, it should already be installed, but if you're on Windows 10, you can just install it through the Microsoft Store. At this point, you might think this is cool, but you aren't really sure of the practical use of it. So I'll give you a real example of an actual automation I created, and I think it's pretty cool. Before we do that though, speaking of cool programs and services, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Mine. Mine lets you find out which companies have your data and lets you control where you do or don't want to keep it. You start out by going to saymine.com and just sign in with your email account you want to analyze and give it a minute to do its thing. Mine will only analyze the subject line and center of the email, the first line preview snippet, plus some metadata to figure out which companies you've interacted with. But as their privacy policy states, they do not collect the content of your email for analysis. Then when it's done, it shows you the results. For me, there are over 250 companies that have data on me, a bit concerning. On the My Footprint page, I can see a selection of these companies, but I prepared myself and looked at the tab showing all the companies, and it is eye-opening. By clicking on a company, it shows me, for example, that EA stores info like my financial and identity data, and even online behavior data and I can see that it has a pretty elevated exposure risk. Here's another company that I barely remember signing up for but never ended up using, and I don't really want them having my data. So I can just click reclaim, and it will compose an email that will be sent directly from my inbox to the company. And this is important because companies generally only honor requests coming directly from the person. Then after you allow it to send the email, you can track and review your requests, and cancel it within an hour if you change your mind. And since privacy is important for businesses too, Mine has created a solution for companies to help manage their own privacy operations, including automation of handling requests from consumers. So if you want to start reclaiming your own data, be sure to visit saymine.com and sign up. And I'll also put that link in the description. And with all that being said, let's continue. All right, so for this automation, what I wanted to do was actually pretty complicated. Basically, I wanted to know when Microsoft publishes a new app in the Microsoft Store, because they've been known in the past to quietly release some cool apps without really telling anyone. It's easy enough to see a list of all the apps they publish, but there are around 700 of them, and they are not sorted by date. Gee, sure would be nice if I could have a program automatically go through the entire list and show me if anything new was added since last time. So that's exactly what I created. Let's take a look. First, let me finish explaining the interface so you know what's going on. On the right side, you can see a list of all these variables, most of which are automatically created for the action. And it's not as complicated as it looks. For example, you can use the action to get the current date and time, and then it creates a variable called current date time. But you can also rename it. At the top, you have controls, including one that just lets you record what you're doing. So if the task is simple enough, you might not even need to set anything manually. You can also copy and paste actions, move them around, disable them, and run the flow starting at a certain point. You can even set breakpoints, which will pause the flow at a certain point, like to debug or check a variable. All right, so now let's go through how my flow works, because it has a good mix of various functions to show you what this is capable of. The first thing it does is launches a new Google Chrome window to that web page that shows all the Microsoft apps. This next part was tricky though, because you see on this page, it doesn't show you the whole list. It makes you keep clicking show more results until all 700 are shown. Fortunately, you can create loops. So I found a JavaScript code snippet online that lets you click any button on a web page, and I set it to just click that show more results button. Then it does that a number of times, which I set to 20. Then it checks if that show more results button is still there. And if it is, it goes back and does 20 more again. I could have it check every time it clicks the button, but that goes way slower than just spam clicking it. Next, I used the extract data from web page action, where it basically asks you to select a couple examples of what data you want. In this case, I want the names of the apps. 
and then it's smart enough to auto detect all the rest of them and turns it into some text. These next actions are just little things to clean up and prepare the text, like removes any blank spaces at the end, converts it into a list, and sorts it alphabetically. It also puts this list into a variable called latest app list for later. Next, it opens up a new Excel file, pastes the list in there, and then saves the spreadsheet with a file name that has the current date. That way, by saving the file, I can use it to compare the lists in the future. But next is where it starts comparing a previous list file I've made before. So it pops up a dialog that lets me select an existing list. This function even lets you choose which folder to select from and filter to only show certain files if you want. After I choose an old list, it copies the data from the spreadsheet and puts it into a variable called old app list and uses this function called subtract lists, which compares that variable to the latest app list and creates a new list with only the entries that are in the latest list and not the old. So now I have a list of only newly added apps and it puts them in the clipboard. Just as a finishing touch, I even have it open notepad and paste them for me to see. There's basically no way I could have done this manually. But like I showed, this just scratches the surface. For example, if I wanted to get fancy, instead of having to select the Excel file myself, I could have it get a list of the files in that folder sorted by date and pick that automatically and continue on. So it would be fully automatic. And then pop up a notification only if there is a new thing found. Wait, I actually did do all that, as you can see here. In this more advanced version, I also made a variable for the path to the list folder, so I can just change it by changing that one variable. And then a bunch of the actions below reference that. And I made it write a text file as a log in the case that it does find new apps. So it really does everything for me now. Now, as cool as this Power Automate program is, it's not perfect. There are some really dumb things about it. For example, you can't just have it run offline. You have to log in with a Microsoft account but at least it keeps the flows backed up in the cloud, I guess. Speaking of backing up though, another stupid thing is if you want to export and save a flow, like to share with a friend, there's no official way to do that. What you can do is select all of the actions in a flow and then hit copy, which will put them in text format. Then you can put them in a text file and if you want to restore them, just copy all the text and hit paste in a flow and they should all show up. So it does work, it's just a little bit convoluted. Oh, and finally, the dumbest thing is even though it's literally an automation program, there is no way to automatically schedule a flow to run. You have to run it manually. So if you want to automatically run something on startup, tough luck. Apparently they reserve that ability for business users, even though it's included in Windows 11 Home. Very dumb. Also, quick random note I'll just throw in here. If you want the browser and web actions to work correctly, you have to make sure to install the browser extension for whatever browser you're using. Now, when you go and open the app, there are a few examples, but if you want to mess around with the one I made, I'll put a link to that text file in the description so you can just copy and paste it into your own flow. You'll just have to change that first variable to a folder you wanna use, and then it should be set. Though the first time you run it, it will display a message that no previous lists were found. Yep, I added a check for that too. So hopefully this video gave you an idea of what this could be used for, and maybe you already know something it would be good for. So definitely let us know about that down in the comments if you do. Thanks again to Mine for sponsoring this video. Be sure to visit saymine.com so you can start reclaiming your data too. The link is also in the description. And of course, do all the usual stuff. Click that big fat thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and also click in the bell to enable notifications because these days YouTube might not show you the videos even if you do subscribe. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is about another cool website that lets you scan files with basically every antivirus all at once. I'll put that link right here. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.